This is the actual first step of our mix. And this is the most important step of your entire mix. So if you want to improve your mix 100 fold, make sure you do the step correctly. What is this? This is the static mix. The static mix is just mixing your entire song with only the volume faders. Why I say this is the most important step of your mix is because one, most of the mixes I listen to that aren't good have something wrong with the static mix. It's almost always the case that there's something wrong with the static mix, which is, full, which is causing the song to sound out of balance. And then the second thing is that every single step that we take on from here on out is going to be impacted by the work that we do right now inside of the static mix. It's super important that we get this right and we get it right the first time so we don't have to go all the way back to this step later and then try to kind of recreate what we had already done and adjust things along the way because we got that static mix wrong. The way we actually do this static mix is I'm gonna show it to you in a second, but just so you have an overview of how this actually works, uh, we're going to bring all of our faders all the way down to nothing, so we don't hear any sound coming out of our DAW. Then we are going to bring up one instrument at a time in order of importance. So for example, I might choose my snare first and then maybe my vocal, etc., and just kind of choose instruments as I think that they contribute well to the mix and how important they are, how vital they are to the song. And then also I'm going to be able to compare my static mix to a already mixed song so that I can ensure I'm really not going too far off the beaten path when it comes to where my elements belong in my mix and what songs that I'm referencing that I actually like the, their balance of. If I'm in line with them, specifically with the kick, the bass, the vocals, and the snare, then I'm usually doing pretty good and I am confident I can move on to the next section. The most important thing in this is to get a good dynamic balance inside of the mix because my next step is going to be compressing on the mix bus and if I don't have a good overall dynamic balance, then my compression on the mix bus isn't going to really mean much because it's going to be changing as I fix the static mix later, which therefore then I would need to redo the compression on my mix bus. So again, really important that we get this step done correctly before we move on. Part of this series that I'm doing, I also created two different guides for you to help you out as you're moving forward in your journey of mixing systematically. So the first one is going to be an EQ guide, which gives you all of the basic understanding of where the areas of interest when you're EQing each and every single instrument. Uh, this is just a guideline, but it also gives you some tools that you can use to understand what's actually wrong with your uh, instruments and your tracks as you're diving into EQing various instruments. And then the second guide is a guide on compression. This is basically a 101 guide on what compression is and how to use it effectively. There are, it goes through the four styles of compression so that you can understand exactly what I'm talking about throughout this series. So make sure you pick, you pick up both of those guides. Uh, you can find the link right below this video or you can go to mastering.dinosaurdogstudio.com. Calm. With that said, let's dive into actually how to do the static mix. Okay, so now that we've done all of our cleaning EQ in the last video, now we are going to start on the static mix. The first step that we do is just to take all of our tracks and bring them all the way down to zero. Uh, the reason why we do this is that we want to focus on the most important tracks initially. Okay, now we have no sound coming out, and that is exactly what we want to begin our static mix. The way we start this is we choose the most important instrument and move it up first. So let's go to our kick drum, just because this song is really driven by that steady, the steady kick here. And we're gonna pop it up here until it's about minus 10 decibels or so. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go to our next most important instrument, which is gonna be our lead vocal. So let's bring that up. Yeah, so the vocal is pretty dynamic here. We're gonna fix that later uh, with some with some compression, but just for now, that's pretty good. We'll fine tune it later. So these are just the doubles of the main, so we'll bring these up to here too, just to make sure that we have the full vocal in there as we move forward. We will sing a new song, cause death is dead and gone with the winter. We will sing a new song, that hallelujah, it's flowing like a river. We're coming back. We will... 
Let's pull up some of our, let's pull up our bass. It's pretty central. We will sing a new song, cause dead is dead and gone with the winner. We will sing a new song, that hallelujah is flowing like a river. Let's do our snare next. We're coming back to life. Four time here too. We're coming back to life, reaching towards the light. Your love is springtime. We're coming back to life. And as I'm doing this, I'm constantly adjusting. Um, again, trying to reference against that kick drum and the vocal really are the main elements I wanna be referencing as I'm doing this, because I want everything to be set accordingly in comparison to those items, because I want those to be the most prominent. That means everything else needs to be a little bit quieter. This will also prevent me from just overrunning, keep turning things up, and then ending up with way too much, way too much gain into my stereo out. So that's another benefit of doing it this way. So now let's get our rhythm guitars up here. Let's start with the acoustic. Looks like we got some banjo here. So another good tip that I have for you when you're doing the static mix is to not necessarily listen to the instrument that you're turning up, but listen to everything else as you're doing it. So when I'm adjusting the banjo, I'm listening to the acoustic guitars and the mandolins to see how turning up the banjo that much is really impacting those instruments. Because what you often run, will run into is that 
if you if I turn up the banjo enough so I can hear it, I'm not going I'm going to be masking all of these other instruments. So uh, that's just something to be cognizant of. Obviously, we have a long ways to go with a lot more tonal shaping with EQ to bring out all the best of these instruments and create some more separation between them. But just for the static mix purposes, make sure that you're listening to all these other elements as you're turning up just your one. It's a common mistake just to listen to the instrument that you're working on and not everything else because everything that I do is impacting something else in the mix. And that's really the art of mixing is being able to identify what I do need to adjust and what I don't need to adjust. And when I do adjust something, how it's impacting everything else in the mix.
Okay, so as we go out through, throughout the mix, we'll probably continue to adjust the static mix, but the goal here is to get it 90% of the way there. As we obviously add some compression, we may need to adjust a little bit more because it's maybe too loud in this another part or too quiet in another part. And then we'll also get to automation at the very end of the mix as well um, to help everything just really stick into place the whole time uh, through the mix. But just as an initial static mix, this is the approach I use every single time and just to get a really solid beginning to the mix uh, so I can confidently start adding compression and EQ on the mix bus and know that I'm pretty much 90% of the way there in terms of where the mix will end up. So I like to spend a lot of time on this part and it's normal for me to spend 20, 30 minutes easily um, just getting a good static mix because again, this is the really the core part of any mix is having a good balance between all of the elements. If you don't have that, you don't have a good mix. So make sure you are spending enough time to get a good mix on here, but not too much time that you're just wearing out your ears and you'll end up re uh, just redoing the static mix later in the mix anyway. So watch out for the next video. We'll be diving into the mix bus compression next. So you'll find that super beneficial in terms of getting your mix into a good groove to begin with as you begin uh, mixing. So look out for that and I'll see you then. Oh, yeah.